gotta show you what's going on out there in the burn unit. Can't find Big Joe. Haas is up here. He's coming and being a jack wagon. Dude, I do not want to deal with you. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. We're checking some of our bison that uh, a lot of you guys miss seeing. We're gonna show them to you today. Plus we've had an explosion of babies. And I mean, not just red dogs. Can't wait to catch you up on. I wanna thank Sunday Lawn Care for their support to our ranch and family and sponsor today's video. Hope you guys are ready to buy some ranch with us. Come boy! Just woke everybody up. Everybody's peeing. Look at this big guy. Hey, hey. What's up, big fella? Put that tail down. Oh, he's got a poop. Nobody wants to see that. Dunbar. Here he is, Mr. Dunbar, the beautiful himself. He's looking great. He's looking really good. He's out here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven females, including Eleanor. After this, we're going to head to the Big Joe Herd, where we got to show you what's going on out there in the burn unit. They're out there in their grazing plan. Dunbar and these females are in pasture one. They've been here for a couple weeks now. They are loving it. And it's been nice because we can see them right outside the barn and stuff. So he's doing really good. Looking fleshy, looking healthy right now. It's super green out here lots of spring grasses those warm season grasses which what i like to call our native grasses are creeping up many of you have been asking about dunbar he's still here he's still hanging out at the ponderosa for now something also is all of the white tag females that we have which is south dakota ones and the wolverine females the double yellow tags all those babies right now we're going to go show you in this baby explosion out in the burn unit so many babies a lot of those are his. They're going to be either Haas or Dunbar out of all those females. So if you see a double white tag from South Dakota or a double yellow tag from the Wolverine Bison, those are going to be primarily out of him and Haas because them two were together at last summer during breeding season. All right. We gotta go check the Big Joe herd and check and see if we have any babies and everything going on there. Then we're gonna come back to the barn. We got something else to show you there. Eleanor! Girl! Hey there, beauty queen. Uh, Eleanor's doing good. She's out here with the Dunbar herd, hanging out in this beautiful pasture one. How many babies can you see in this picture? Yeah, there's a bunch. Uh, looks like another case. Where's the big girl? 64. Watch it. weird can't find big joe haas is up here he's coming and being a jack wagon but i lots of red dogs i see another cow rolling in that'd be 31 got all of our babies i believe do not know where big joe is 
He's usually with them. Not a problem. There's a cow by herself. I see somebody back there too. 1500? 1500. She's fine. She's okay. I see a looked like a body over here not sure why he'd be by himself he's always with the herd I'll get it babe buddy just eating what are you doing <laughs> what do you want All right, we're kind of chasing the herd around a little bit. They've moved. You guys probably want to know, well, who all has had calves since we have so many right now? And I need to get a full count on where we're at. Kind of have an idea, but I want to make sure. The thing about the red dog season is you can pull out here anytime, any day, and you may have a new baby. That's what's so fun about it and uh, exciting when you do a herd check. So this is Christie's um, over here. It looks like the jumper. We've got 54. Uh, we've got some laying down and sometimes they're just hard to see so i have to move a little bit um it's funny because all the baby mamas and the babies are hanging out together and then the ones that haven't had babies are all hanging out together or some late that had late babies are hanging out together there's a calf here a uh, older calf there um so they're all kind of in their own little groups right now uh, but the ones with babies are hanging out. So I'm going to go over here real quick. See if, uh, see which ones we identify. I see Bell. Bell Star is over there. Dude, I do not want to deal with you. What are you jazzed up about? stars we just named that one phoenix so south dakota 1501 jumper 154 i call her kind of one of our originals and then we've got a canada over there let's see that is canada 137 is over there I'll stop here a second because I told you they were all hanging out together. They're in this area. This is 8006 is her number. That would be a quapaw heifer. She's part of the original herd. That's her baby. Uh, the one pooping back there is I'm not sure. This is, uh, we've got two cows from Oklahoma City from the sale. Um, and that's one of those right there. We bought them last December. Uh, when we bought them, we couldn't really tell if they were pregnant, but they were healthy. And brought them home a couple months later, like, oh yeah, for sure they're pregnant. So she's got one. The other cow has one too. 
I don't know where she's at. This is what we call Texas 11. She's right here. She's got a nice little calf. And then, let's see. Way over there, I see another Canada heifer. So that's two Canadas. Uh, this is Quapaw's. Oh, that's Quapaw's baby. She had her baby back in January. I see Kit. Kit's part of the original. She just had her calf like two days ago. And then this is a Peter Cole heifer. She's from Missouri. She's kind of part of the original. She's got a little baby. And then over there we've got another Canada cow. Well, they're all becoming cows now because they were heifers, but now, now cows. If you don't, if you guys don't know the terminology, the same terminology goes for cattle, which is bovine. Uh, so bulls, Big Joe, Haas over there bickering at each other. And then heifers become cows after they have one of those. A lot of people ask, why do you call them red dogs? Well, uh, to me and what I have learned is I had heard that the Native Americans used to call them red dogs. And I could be completely wrong. And I think I heard that from somebody. But they call them red dogs because when they're born, right, they have this unique red cinnamon color like they do right now. And they look like a full-grown red dog when they're born. So they can be, when they're born, they're anywhere from 30 to 50 pounds, somewhere in that range. It's like a full-grown dog that's been born, and they call them red dogs. So that's where the term comes from. You guys can back me up. Let me know if you can do some research on it and find something that I don't know. Teach me something. Um, but that's the term that I like to use, and that's the term that I always heard that it is all right i got another one for you guys how many calves can you spot in this picture <laughs> told you they were hang all hanging out together one two three four five six S she didn't have one seven eight nine 10, 11, I see 12 over there. Here's another Canada that I was talking about. I got a little closer. Her tag number is 116. And then we've got the, I know who this is. Hey guys. Peaches had her calf as well. I think that's peaches right here. This must be peaches. Can't see her tag number, but she only has one tag in her, in the, her left ear. Yeah, it is peaches. Come on, Jackie! Okay, you guys have known that we recently started a little side project of something that uh i came up with or trying to do <laughs> so i want to try to do something i want to try to start a conservation or maybe a population enhancement i'm not sure the right word for it I'm trying to bring something back to the ponderosa that's been missing and i've never seen before uh it's actually missing in oklahoma a population decline for this species. We're gonna try a little project and we're gonna keep you guys along with us on this. So uh, let's go in here and take a look. But before I do that, I gotta do a couple little things. Gotta knock off the to-do list. We gotta go to the backyard real quick.
are you doing? Trying to pretty up this yard. Manicure it. Make Man it look pretty. Manicure it. This is Brooks's hangout spot now. Hangout. Hey girls. I think this is pretty much the only place at the Ponderosa where bison don't graze. Yeah. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be right? Mm -hmm. I think so. This little spot here, this is a this is the place that we like to hang out uh, with our friends, family, or whatever. Brooks plays out here quite a bit. It's a nice little yard. It uh, needs some work. Sit here and watch the bison. Uh, the Dunbar group is out here right now, and it looks like bullets out there currently rolling. <laughs> Probably in something dead. Probably in something bad. Oh, gosh. Come here, bullet. bullet. Come on, bullet. So I'm just trying to pretty this yard up a little bit. I will say that uh, being a homeowner, a landowner, ranch owner, any of that, you got to take care of yards. And I have for, you know, a long time growing up, used to mow yards and all that, but I never knew much about how to manicure your yard, how to take care of your yard. You keep water on it, throw some fertilizer out there and you're good to go. Well, it's not that easy. And uh, we do regenerative ag and Marissa and I try to pay attention to what we put on our pastures now. Since we've been doing that, we still have a lot to learn. We may have found something that is gonna help us out, especially for a guy that doesn't know a whole lot and that can be customizable to your lawn. This is where it starts. This is the most important thing that you can do for your soil is find out what you need. Everybody's yard's different, but the most important thing is to start off knowing what is in your soil and go from there. And that's where Sunday comes in. Once we take our three soil samples, we'll put it in this bag. It'll be shipped off to the lab. We'll get our results back. And then Sunday can recommend what you need and what's best for your grass and your lawn. We've got our seed and feed ready right here in our spreader. In this mix, we've got fine and tall fescue, perennial ryegrass, and Kentucky bluegrass. Also in this is our feed. So we're gonna put some of those micronutrients back into our soil to get this lawn in shape. We've got bare spots, seed and feed can fix those bare spots for you. We just scratch the surface a little bit with a rake, use our spreader, and it'll get in some of these bare spots and get that grass growing and not those weeds. Sunday Lawn Care will send your products that are customized for you, your family, or your needs straight to your door. Once you've done your soil test, you know what your soil needs. It's important. That's what Marissa and I do even out on our pastures for our bison. With the fertilizer here, you're going to put those macronutrients back in your lawn, back in the soil, which is important no matter what you're growing, whether it's grass, vegetables, or flowers. One of the cool things about Sunday that they do is really special to us is take a look here. 1% of every purchase goes restoring the tall grass prairie through 1% of our planet. You guys see what that is right there? No harsh chemicals, powerful ingredients backed by nature. Designed with safety in mind, better for people, better for pets, better for your farm animals, and most of all, better for the planet. Take the stress and worry about what is needed for your lawn to make it look better. Sunday Lawn Care can take care of you. Visit their website and then get a customizable plan for your lawn and it ships straight to your door. I purchased six Rio Grande turkey eggs from eBay. Unfortunately, only three out of the six hatched. They check for fertility before they actually send them to you and that's just how it goes sometimes. But I kind of knew going into it, there's always a chance of them not hatching. Let me go back a little bit. One of them was cracked when I did receive it. I knew that that one wasn't going to hatch. So really I'll say we were three for five. So we took these two and we got them started in their little uh, new home for now. Got a heat lamp going. And then we left the one, that one had just hatched that morning, but the others hatched several hours before. And we like to leave them in the incubator for a little bit just to acclimate to their new environment and stay warm in that humidity and then slowly transfer them to their new home. So that last one we left in there a little bit longer. And by the time Brooks got home from school, I let her move it in with the other two. Go ahead and grab him. 
Grab him. I'm trying to. He's reaching and grabbing him. Easy. Can we take a nice soft, soft step down? Daddy. Okay. There's the other two. Okay, just put him in there nice and slow. Put him in front of that heater. There you go. Good job, Brooks. Now he's got some compadres to be with. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's doing good. I love this time of the year. One, the beautiful weather here in Southern Oklahoma, but two, it is a red dog season and we are full go at it. You never know if you're gonna have any more red dogs or not. That's the most exciting part about doing these herd checks. I wanna thank Sunday Lawn Care for supporting our family, our ranch, and everything that we do by sponsoring today's video. This company supports lots of great things and one of the great things that they support is bison, guys. The tall grass prairie. And guess where the tall grass prairie is? It's in Oklahoma. How awesome is that? You can support us today, guys, by going to www.getsunday.com backslash bison. Use the code bison30. You can get 30% off. 30% off your very first custom lawn plan, all designed for you. You can even go to their website right now and you can put your address in and you can already get started that way. It's easy. They'll already start recommending what you need for your lawn and what soil type you have. Thank you guys for watching us today. We'll keep you updated on the turkey babies, the red dogs and everything. Thank you guys. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. You don't barely have any feathers left. Why are you coming at me? Modeled Houdan. Really? Why do you always do that to people when they turn their back? There you go, Silky. That's what I'm talking about. Jeez, these guys. Look at this beauty.